You guys, you guys are in a good mood tonight. I can tell. I'm scared for my life. I admit it. <laughs> We've been, we've been growing a lot lately. I mean, we've had a lot of shows lately. We certainly have a couple people in the house now. Thank you for that. Um, one of the things that's happened to the Circus Freaks, new people, the Circus Freaks, are the production company and the performing troupe that helped put this thing together. We have started a program we call the Junior Freaks, which are our up-and-coming members. We didn't have those for a long time because when we started out, well, it was just whoever was willing to go do it. And then three years of experience later, we were like, eh, okay, we, we should probably help other people get ready to do it. It's kind of what started this event. Um, as we move forward, we started putting some people. Right now, our junior freaks in the program are Kasha Reese, who you met at the door tonight. <laughs> Little G standing right over there. <laughs> Acting security chief, Little G. Don't let his size fool you, he's tough. He is tough, he is tough. And then Valos is hanging in back, I assume. Valus, Valus says the rare, the rare privilege. Uh, I'm still stuttering from the experience of being hit in the face with a pie. <laughs> it was that good. <laughs> but our junior freaks, uh, we, we, the thing is, most events, you, you get new people in and they're new. We bring our people up through community. So I've known these people for years. Kasha and I, for example, have known each other probably about, oh God, three, three years, four years, something like that. And we got, to, we got to talking, but we, we don't spend as much time together as some of the other people in our group. And we actually went out to lunch last week to kind of have that junior orientation moment, which really freaked her out, and I just wanted a salad. <laughs> it's true. But we went and we talked, and, you know, okay, there was about 20 or 30 minutes of this is our expectations and very growly. And then about midway through it, we just started talking about gags and cool stuff we wanted to build. And wouldn't it be awesome ifs, which that's my favorite part of these kind of things. Wouldn't it be awesome if we did this? And she said, well, we can do this thing. And she mentioned something that would require dancing. Now, there are, there are two things I, I, I don't do. Well, yeah. And there are two things I don't do. Yeah. One is sing and one is dance. Hang on, hang on. There's two things I don't do. Because when I sing, I sound like a clown with a frog in his mouth. And I dance like a frog with a clown in his mouth. <laughs> you don't want either of those up here. But she asked me a question that got me thinking. And this is where the danger starts. She said... Stage left hand. <laughs> Dot com. Not yet. <laughs> so she asked me the question. She said, what's stopping you? Uh-oh. Because then you actually have to analyze the default no. You have to go, oh, um, I'm terrified. That, yet, and then we, we have the yet, and we have all these other things that we, we built into our community. And I had to really start thinking about this. And it got me thinking about some other stuff. I remember one of the best dates I ever went on. And I'm probably going to reveal my personal life here for a moment. <laughs> he, she, it, or the goat will remain nameless. But the important thing was, it was the perfect date. It actually required being a double date. It had to be because we broke into the roof of a building that will remain nameless because there's a statute of limitations on this. And we set up a picnic on the roof of a building. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. I thought we were doing great. It was very romantic. It was back before I was really, really cynical. So it was perfect. And the funny thing about this is I, I, you know, I had the food to worry about. I had breaking into a building <laughs> to worry about. I had sneaking three other people into a building to worry about. I had all this other stuff in my head. So I wasn't thinking about the fact that I'm actually scared of heights which would have really screwed with my game if I was up there trying to be like, how you doing? But I'm like, you know, clinging to a wall going, no, 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 I'll stay over here. <laughs> that wouldn't work. Thinking about now, the only thing that uh, makes me not think about the fact that I'm, well, I'm off the ground actually, in addition to the stage fright thing we've been talking about lately, is the fact that I'm so distracted by so much in my head and so much I have to do and get the, the monologue out there, get the story out there, get the show on the road, plan everything, get the baggy pants on. All of this has to come together. Thank you, the pants, thank you. <laughs> but we have to get through all that in order, in order to get anywhere or we're doomed. I've been thinking a lot about an email I got a while back that said, how do you get over stage fright? I've been talking about it for weeks. And you know, I said the first lesson I learned was realize that you people are on my side. I said, realize that. As a performer, I'm not talking about me. I know you love me. But anybody who steps up on this stage, 
These people, let me tell you, these people love you. And that means you don't have anything to worry about there because they're on your side. So the second thing is the hard part. I'm not going to lie. Let's say you got the talent, you got the idea, you got to do the work. The invisible work stinks. It's that rehearsal and practice and preparation and running your lines while you walk around your block to the point where your neighbors think you're a mental patient. They do. They've come to the show. They still think I'm a mental patient. True story. It's true. But as I went through it, I got better at this. And when my brain blanks out, because when these two things blind me and I freak out and I lose it completely, I remember, even though my hands are shaking, even though I'm worried, hey, I'm surrounded by friends. I know exactly what I've got to do. I just got to, part three, step the hell up here and do it. So my third piece of advice is like a trilogy, come complete at long last everything I've learned. You are afraid. You're right. It's terrifying. And you will freak out. Your mind will shut down. And when you do, rely on the rehearsal. Know the room loves you. And just be brave because you only have to be brave for about three steps and everything else is autopilot. And that's how you get on the open stage.